This is our first Scooby panel special edition. We'll be discussing the news about Scoob 2. I'm your host, Nikki Blake from ScoobyAddicts.com, and I'm joined by Cameron Bates from Scooby Doo and Cameron 2, and blogger, artist, and Scooby collector, Wendy Bridge. Hi, guys. Hey, everyone. All right. So yesterday, they announced that Tony Cervoni talked about them working on Scoob 2. He said it hasn't been confirmed yet, but they're working on it. So are we excited? <laughs> are we not excited? I've seen a lot of people that are, a lot of people that aren't. Cameron, what have you gotten? I know you posted about it. For sure. Yeah, so, you know, um, it was it was really unexpected news. It, it really popped up um, on my Google search. You know, I was, I was looking up some stuff about Scoob and Scoob 2 popped up and I was like, oh, you know, I, I've heard some fan, fan theories, you know, I wonder if that's just one of them. And no, it was actually from comicbook.com and I know that they're a liable source, reliable source. And I clicked on them and it showed that Tony Cervoni, hope I'm saying his name right. Um, and he did an interview with them saying that, you know, Scoob, Scoob another Scoob sequel will be in the works. Um, and, you know, I posted about it yesterday and it's, it's really been trending uh, on the page on my social media pages because I know a lot of people really enjoyed Scoob number one. I know some people um, there was, you know, some there was some hate and there was some love for it. Um, but I genuinely I genuinely think fans are really excited for it because I think we're going to get a lot more. Um, I think we're going to get a lot more looking at uh, the Hanna-Barbera universe. We're going to see a lot more characters pop up. Um, you know, I, and that was the thing I posted about yesterday. I, in my comic section, the comment section, a lot of people were uh, commenting, we want to see Scrappy Doo, we want to see Scooby Dumb, we want to see Speed Buggy, we want to see the Teen Angels. So, you know, I think that's pretty cool. And, you know, um, at the end credits of Scoob, number one, we saw a lot of Hanna Barbera characters like, you know, Johnny Quest and uh, I think it was Magilla Gorilla and, uh, uh, purple ape and you know all i mean it was it was cool to, to see all those um and adamant and all that and so you know i'm 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 truly genuinely excited about scoob too um i will say you know when i did post about it yesterday i did get a lot of um a lot of not i wouldn't say threatening um messages but i did get a, a lot of messages where people are upset with me saying it hasn't been confirmed yet for Scoob 2. You shouldn't be posting about it unless you know something for fact. You don't know if it's going to be a sequel. It could be a TV show. It could be a follow-up. It could be something on HBO Max. You don't know what it could be. So quit posting stuff if you don't know what it is. And here's my thing. Tony Cervoni did a interview with comicbook.com. He said something is in the works. And so he said it's going to be following up to Scoob. And so when I say Scoob 2, it may be Scoob 2. Or it may be just a following up to Scoob. And that's what I meant by Scoob 2. It doesn't have to be, uh, genuinely be Scoob 2. It could be something for Scoob to be in another platform, whether it's a TV series or a movie. And so, and like I said, on my page, I post about my collection. I post about Scooby-Doo news. I post about anything and everything Scooby-Doo. And I don't post about, uh, there's been some fan theories here and there about other movies outcoming and stuff like that, you know, and I'm not denying them, but until I hear a reliable source confirm them, then I will post about them and I will share about it. And uh, Wendy, Nikki, I know y'all are the same too. Like y'all aren't going to post something till y'all know that it's reliable till it's, you know, it's something's really confirmed. Um, have we got confirmation yet? No, but Tony Cervoni has directed Scoob. He's going to direct more of the movies in the future. He did well with Scoob number one, you know, so if he's saying, hey, something's in the works, then something's in the works. The man works for Warner Brothers, you know, right. Um, I'm just really excited. You know, um, when I first watched Scoob, you know, it's one of those movies you have to kind of go back and rewatch it, you know, and kind of give it a little bit of time to grow on you. And not saying that in a bad way, it was a really good movie. Um, it's just, like I said, it's one of those movies you kind of have to watch again and again and again, you know, to, you know, kind of get the feel of it. And, um, and I liked it. I really did. I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was a good plot. I love how they're really, um, they're branching off into the Hanna-Barbera universe. I think this is exciting because, you know, there's... People have taken comic books and they have expanded into the, their universes. People have taken, you know, Harry Potter, you know, all these different fan things and they're expanded into the universe. But we have really not gotten uh, an expansion into the Hanna-Barbera universe since, you know, La like Laugh Olympics. 
you know, like when Yogi Bear and Scooby-Doo and all of them are crossing over. And so now we're kind of starting to see more Hanna-Barbera cartoons pop up. And to me, it's really cool. And so to hear that they're going to be doing, as I say, Scoob, he's right here, see another Scoob, you know, movie come out or a series, whatever. I think it's really exciting. Um, you know, our, our previous panel just released today. Um, and in that panel, we were talking about, you know, some controversy within Scooby-Doo. Well, one thing I have to say was Al, Al Chiasen. And he said, and I love this, he said, Scooby-Doo is still in the main media. They're still making more development of Scooby-Doo. They're still keeping him alive. And I agree with Al 100%. We're keeping him alive. So it's, it's exciting to see the movie come out. Yeah, it, it is exciting. And last year, I believe on the day that Scoob released, Phil Holler, with, who's the head of animation for Scoob, he talked about creating a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. So they literally want to just create this whole universe with movies and shows and, you know, Scooby is kind of the, at the forefront of it in a way. Although to me, Scoob was not a Scooby movie. Right. I have a hard time thinking of it as a Scooby movie and watching it. I have to watch it thinking that it's not so that I can enjoy it more. Right. Wendy, how do you feel about Scoob too? Yeah, I... I'm definitely way more excited at the prospect of that than I was when the first one was being talked about because I was very skeptical and it took me almost an entire year to finally sit down and watch it. And to be honest, I probably never would have watched it if it hadn't have been for our panels. And I'm not going to go on a panel and talk about something that I, I know zero about. And I'm so glad that I did watch it because Nikki's right. I do agree that it's far enough removed from Scooby-Doo that I think people will enjoy it more if they're not thinking, oh, classic Scooby, canon. This is how, you know, I've, I've loved this for 50 years. Is there a little bit of that in it? Absolutely. Uh, one thing I really appreciate about it and that makes me look forward to not only more Scoob, but branching out with other Hanna-Barbera characters, because let's be honest, I like I I would say this anyway. I don't think there's a bad Hanna-Barbera character. I think Hanna-Barbera was so on top of their game for yeah. so long that they never had a dud. Every character that they ever made, put it in front of me. I will watch it and I will enjoy it. Yeah. And so having seen how they treated the Scooby gang, they treated them with respect. Did they make it their own version of that yes they did but they still kept it like I would take a four-year-old to see it I would take a 16-year-old to see it and you know a 90-year-old grandma could also watch it and enjoy it and I think that at at its core that's always what you need with Hanna-Barbera or Scooby or any of the characters is it needs to be appropriate for everybody to enjoy and they definitely nailed that with the first Scoob so I'm not really concerned about them doing something questionable you know, I really think that the only the only part of the first one that I didn't like, which I'm hoping I'm hoping that the first one made a big enough splash in social media that the writers and stuff will maybe read some of what fans have said and our, our smaller criticisms and maybe take them to heart. The voicing. Cameron pointed this out in previous panels. Captain Caveman, it just just didn't work. You know, that was one area where I think they kind of they kind of missed the boat a little bit. And so if they were going to bring in all of these other classic characters that we know and we love so much, I just hope that they will put maybe just just be a little bit more careful in. It's not necessarily about having them sound exactly the same, because obviously you're not going to get that ever with anything, but keep it in the same flavor. Captain Caveman was the perfect example of the character was just different. Dino Mutt completely changed the actual character of the character. And it's not that it was bad, but if you're going to bank on a name, if you're going to bank on a well-known character and people's pre-existing love for that character, you need to, to show them due respect, keep them as they're meant to be. They don't have to sound the same. You know, was it, was it Tracy Morgan that did Captain Caveman? Yeah. 
could still voice that character. It's not that the, there was something wrong with his voice. It's just he wasn't voicing that character the way that that character, I feel, should have been voiced. That's all. It, it's not like you even need a different actor. But, you know, Chasey, if you're watching, just rewatch the old stuff and just try to capture that flavor because that Hanna-Barbera classic flavor is what makes those characters still so lovable and gets us excited about it 50 some years later. You know, that's what we love about them. We're not saying that you can't change them up a little bit and make them your own, but there, there are certain things about them that don't change that. You can put them in different scenarios. You can do different things with them. You can change up their look a little bit if you want, but we want to know like, no, that's the character. That's the character that I love and that I want to see more of. So if they do something, I I think it will probably be okay. I'm, I'm kind of excited of, to see that. A lot of people have said that they want them to bring in the regular voice cast for Scoob 2. And I don't know if they would do that, especially since Scoob wasn't able to be released in the theaters because of the pandemic. I think they're hoping that Scoob 2 is going to be in theaters and it's going to make a lot of money. And, you know, they don't seem to think that the regular voice actors are going to bring in the money that they want. So, Cameron, what do you think about them, uh, the, the current Scoob cast voicing the, for Scoob 2? Or do you think they'll bring in the original voice actors? Not original, but right. the current voice actors. You know, I'm probably going to get a lot of backlash for this, and I'm probably going to get some death threat messages, but hey, I mean, I've already been there, done that, right? <laughs> um, I, I say you've already made it like that. Keep it like that. I, and, and, and a lot of people would probably get all angry with me and say, well, you know, we, you, know you should have done it like this, or they should have had the original cast. Maybe, but they should have done it in Scoob 1. They didn't. Right. So it's going to sound weird when you try and you take these characters now that have the voices from Scoob One and you're trying to make them sound like more like the original cartoon ones. And to me, it, it, it's, it's, it's differing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you're, you're balancing on scales and it's like, okay, well, hold on. Um, you know, I think Matthew Lillard and Great Delisle and Kate and Frank do an amazing job at the cartoon voices. I think they just spot on. They're doing a fantastic job, and especially Frank being the original Fred and, you know, uh, not Scooby, I'm sorry, the original Fred, and he's also taking on Scooby. But, you know, also, you know, Wendy's even brought up in a, in a previous panel talking about, uh, you know, we had Dynamut. You know, Frank should voice Dynamut. And did I agree with Wendy? You know, yes, I did, because I, I thought of Dynamut as being goofy and all that. But now Dynamut's real serious. So, trying to take a serious dynamut and trying to put frank welker's voice on a serious dynamut i'll be honest with you guys i don't think it would work i really don't now if you had a goofy you know you know you know uh, springs coming out of him and you know tripping over himself and you know oh hey bf and da, 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 you know that would be frank <laughs> that was an awful <laughs> impression by the way but Actually, that, that was really good bad. It, oh, that was really good. Yeah. Well, yeah. if they need somebody for for Dynamut in the future, <laughs> I'm here, Warner Brothers. Let's talk. Um, no, but seriously, like you know, it, it's already set in stone. It is. So I'm saying, leave the characters as they are. But I, but, but Nikki, to answer your question, no, I don't think they should. And it's like what Wendy said. We already have these voice actors in the roles. Let's keep them. But guys, let's do some research and let's really try to capture the essence of the characters. You know, you had Tracy Morgan as Captain Caveman, okay? And Tracy, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I mean, we're not trying to pick on you, but we're just saying. Go back and watch the original Captain Caveman. He was real goofy and silly. And he's like, oh, Unga Bunga, you know, Captain, you know, he was screaming Captain Caveman. To me, when Tracy Morgan did Captain Caveman, it was like he was just talking normal. It's like he was not trying like you and take for example when when frank welker does the voice of scooby-doo or scott ennis does scooby-doo they they take their vo vocal cords and they go into the character they jump into that character but you have some of these voice actors and they're just talking like normal and i see it more and more and more i i, I see it like the new space jam movie they, they were they're going to release zendaya is doing lola bunny 
and she's talking just like normal. She's not talking like Lola Bunny, you know, no hate against Zendaya. I think she's going to do an amazing job as Lola Bunny, but you have these people just talking in normal tone voices. And to me, it, it, it just, it seems real weird. So I, I, I think like what Wendy said, really try to go back, do your research, work on your, I mean, heck Warner Brothers, if you have to hire a vocal coach for some of these people to really, you know, capture a cartoon. Cause see, when I watch a cartoon, especially Hanna-Barbera, you go back and watch Hanna-Barbera, they were silly and goofy and fun and lighthearted. You know, and now you kind of got the characters kind of sound a little bit more serious in the tone. You know, I think it would be kind of cool. Um, and I don't know if they would do this or not, but for some of them to kind of go back to a silly kind of goofy character voice, you know. Um, and so, yeah. And so, like I said, I, I think they got they it's already set in stone. Leave the voice actors as they are voice actors. You're doing a great job. I would just say try to capture the cartoon essence of the originals a little bit not i know you're not going to sound exactly like the originals but at least give it a shot i think it would be really cool to hear that so yeah it would be nice to have them portray the characters more like the characters and less right. like themselves you know you we've talked about this before the current voice actors have been doing it for years so they're putting their heart and soul into it and in Scoob, it just didn't feel like they were doing that. Right. Now, yesterday or two days ago was Will Forte's birthday. And I posted happy birthday to him because he is part of Scooby history now. And most people said he's not my shaggy. He's terrible. They should not have passed him. There were some people that were that said happy birthday or that they really enjoyed his version of shaggy. But most people did not take very nicely to the post that I made. Um, when I posted it, it was simply just happy birthday. I, I didn't really ask people their opinion on him, uh, but typically when I post birthdays, I do get a lot of people who post things like, oh, I like this, this actor better than this one, or you know, this person isn't very good as that character. So. Anybody have anything else that they want to add about Scoob 2? I was just going to say, um, I think it's going to be very exciting to get the experience of if Scoob 2 is a movie and, or, you know, if it's an HBO Max series, awesome. But if this is going to be an, a second Scoob movie, it's going to be very exciting to go to the theaters and see it and actually have that experience. Now, don't get me wrong. I got to go see Scoob a month ago. Um, you know, in theaters, but it, it still didn't have the magic of actually going to see it when it was released. And I can't explain how it was like that. But, you know, the last time I actually saw a Scooby-Doo movie in theaters was um, is when Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed came out in theaters, you know. And so now it's exciting because I have a little baby nephew and I'm excited to go take him to the Scooby-Doo movie, you know, get some of the Scooby popcorn buckets and the merch, you know, and actually sit down and watch the movie and actually have that feel and excitement with a jam-packed, you know, movie theater with other Scooby fans really watching it. And I think that's going to be really exciting because I know with coronavirus and a crazy, crazy year we had back in 2020, I think this is going to be very fresh and uh, very rewarding. And a lot more people are going to be able to come to the movie theater and actually experience Scoob, you know, or Scoob 2, I should say, or whatever it, it's titled to be in the future. Um, I've had a lot of people message me and say, do you know when it's going to be released? no one knows when it's going to be released we don't have those details yet um i would say you know like 2023 maybe early 2024 i don't know to be honest with you that's just coming to find out it sounds but, uh, like it's barely even in production at this point. yeah i think with so, coronavirus it's delayed a lot of movies if you ask me <clears throat> excuse me it's delayed a lot of movies so I, I think it's going to be later on down the road, you know, and, and we just got the news that there is something in the works right now. Uh, Scoop right. number one was a success, even though it had a lot of backlash and had a lot of hate, it still was a good success. And uh, yeah, and it's exciting. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to make this longer than it is, but, you know, I just got to say it is because I, I love Scooby-Doo. Yes, he's my favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoon. But it is honestly exciting to see, because I, I love Hanna-Barbera in general. So, you know, I love Johnny Quest and Speed Buggy and Captain K. And so to see those actually come into, you know, 
the, the big screen is actually really exciting. And if um, Will Hanna and Joseph Barbera were still alive to this day, I think it would be really cool for them to see, hey, our cartoon characters on the big screen. You know what I mean? So um, anyways, that's all I have to say. I'm just, I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to be really good. Wendy, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I would just like to encourage any fans that may be watching. This is still really early. You know, like Nikki said, is it even, are they, are they even in production yet? Like there's, there's probably a long road to go for this but there's a very good chance that it's going to happen. And while nothing is ever going to be perfect for everybody because everybody has different tastes, uh, and let's not forget too, that everyone joined the Scooby fandom at a different period in time. You know, are there some of us that joined later on, but, but we were introduced with the classic series? Yes, but there are plenty of people, younger people who, what they, what they know is the more modern Scooby-Doo and maybe they appreciate the classic but they're like well you know I just like I prefer the newer stuff and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that so I would just encourage people that if you have opinions about what you would like to see in these films uh, what you don't want to see in these films share your opinions online but keep it nice okay the old adage you catch more flies with honey than vinegar is true so I'm not saying that Warner Brothers or any of the people that are involved with production are going to see what we have to say, but you never know. Okay, that is something that we have learned on the panel recently. You never know who is watching and who is hearing what you're saying. So like Disney tried to teach us a long, long time ago, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. That doesn't mean that you cannot share concerns, that you can't share criticism, that does not mean that your opinion, if you don't like something, is not valid. There is a right way and a wrong way to express yourself. And if you have serious concerns or you have like really strong feelings of what you would like to see, share those feelings and maybe the right people will see that. And if enough of us do it and we do it in a polite and respectful manner, you never know what will happen. You might just change some minds, you know, they could be thinking of going in this direction. And then if there's a whole bunch of us online and we're discussing it politely, not like, oh, your movie's garbage, you're garbage, this is trash, I'm gonna kill you because I don't like what you're doing. Don't, don't do that ever to anybody for any reason, okay, just don't. But make a discussion out of it make it polite, be honest, but keep in mind that these are people and they have feelings too and they have jobs to do and not everybody is going to share your opinion. Feel free to voice your opinion, do it with respect and do it constructively. We can give constructive criticism because it's our money coming out of our pockets when we go to the theater. And Warner Brothers knows that, they do. So share the discussion, make the discussion happen, just do it in a nice manner and maybe the right people will hear what you have to say and implement your ideas too. Agreed. All right, that is it for this Scooby panel special edition. Let us know your comments on Scooby-Doo and you can check out all of our social media um, links in the description below. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel.